Hey guys, it's Monique and it's Possibilities with Monique DeMeo. I decided that on this podcast, I would have a blend of really great women being interviewed and also some of my voice. And I thought, let me do some quick 15 minuteers just on a topic at a time. And today we're going to talk about inertia. So I'm literally going to set my timer so the promise that I make to you will happen and I will not speak more than 15 minutes on inertia. What does inertia mean? Basically, the idea of change, the idea of movement versus staying in place is what we're talking about. And how does that show up for people? Well, inertia could be a variety of things. It could be I don't want to change my habits, I don't want to change my job, I don't want to change my outlook on life or work or food or exercise or lifestyle or all of the above or relationships or all of the above. And I had an experience with inertia the other day with a client and it really made me pause. It made me think about wow, we are presenting an incredibly compelling reason to do things differently for you, Mr. client and your organization that would ultimately save you time, money and offer better results. And yet, this happened a couple times last week. It must have been like, I don't know, Mercury was retrograde as I like to say or something. But the point is, in these cases we were turned down for the simple reason that they didn't want to change. They didn't want to change because it ultimately impacted somebody's job. It impacted the way they did business and god forbid you should mess with what was already happening. So I had this flashback of, oh, we've already tried that, that'll never work kind of routine, right? So when do you see this? Do you find yourself in a situation going, oh no, that that's great for you, but that would never work for me. Oh, she you know, she works out every day and she gets up at 5.30 or she does this or she does that, but I've tried that. It doesn't work for me. Okay, great. Have you tried something else? Because ultimately, if you're looking for better results on any level, whether that's at work, at, at home, in your relationships, in your physicality, and you're not willing to do anything differently, you're going to get more of the same. I'm going to repeat that. If you're not willing to do anything differently, you're going to get more of the same. So the question you have to ask yourself is, am I happy with same same? Well, if you're complaining about it and you have friends that you complain to, do you have you ever been in this situation where either you're the complainer or you're the complainee and your friend is whining or waxing on poetic about the same thing and you see her again and it's the same complaint and then you see her again and it's the same complaint at what point do we pull ourselves up from our bootstraps and say hmm, I'm not happy with the way things are whatever that is and I need to change something because this isn't working I don't know or you're stuck being stuck and you're happy there. So stop complaining because at that point you really don't want to change anything. You just want to complain about it. And here's the thing with people listening to us complaining to them. They don't want to hear it more than maybe twice. Because at that point they get the message. The message is I just want to vent, but I really don't want to do the work that it's going to take to change the situation. I just want you to tell tell you I'm unhappy with my husband, boyfriend, 40 pounds, job, you know, house, whatever it is. And you say you presumably is a good friend, you would give them some advice and it would be something like, well, have you considered or did you want to or what about if you did this or you know, some friends will just come out and tell you what to do depending on how they're wired. And then you would be like, yeah, no, I don't, I don't think so. That's not for me. Yeah, no, 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 no. And you find yourself being negative Nelly. So here's the thing we have to think about with inertia. What's the return on investment on the thing that's bothering you? Is it really worth staying stuck? 
I don't know. I mean, you can have a pity party for yourself for a day or two. You know, maybe things didn't work out in your promotion or you didn't get promoted or, you know, you you had a bad week, you were on this great regimen and you liked your lifestyle and you were doing things at the right sequence, the right time. And every day you were really on it and you were, you know, fit and exercise and whatever. And you had a week on vacation and you fell off the wagon and you get home. You're like, well, screw it. I may as well just keep eating and drinking and not exercising and doing all the things I did on the cruise for 10 days. No, you get back on it. And you return to what was working for you because inertia, as you know, is the most powerful force in the universe. So if you get stuck doing or not doing a particular thing, you're going to keep doing that or not doing that particular thing. Are you following me? So then you, as far as I'm concerned, have lost the right to complain about that thing because you're not willing to change that thing. So I want you to think about the thing right now that's bugging you in your life. Could be a relationship, could be job, could be fitness, could be food, could be wellness in general, could be children, could be all sorts of different things. I want you to really, really be clear about that one or thing that is top of mind for you that's bugging the crap out of you. And every day you wake up and you say, oh God, this thing. What is it? And then think about how many times you've complained about this thing, both to yourself, because if you read my book, you'll know how and what you say to yourself is as important as what you say and to whom you say it externally. So are you complaining to yourself? Because your your inner person, your inner voice is listening. Your body is physiologically aligning to what you're saying about yourself to yourself. Okay. So if you are calling yourself a piece of shit for this thing that's bugging you, you're not going to show up as your best self at any point in time until you stop talking to yourself like that. And then inertia is a possibility to be broken. But until you do, don't do that, you're going to get more of the same. So this thing that's bugging you, have you complained to your friends about it? Have you complained to your partner about it in addition to yourself? So now is it consuming all sorts of calories for you? It's consuming all sorts of time. Are you feeling good about the time you're putting into this thing? Or do you think maybe if you spend half the time complaining and or sharing this thing with other people, changing the thing that needs to be changed, would you come out ahead? Wait, let's think about that. What is the return on investment on doing things differently? Well, you have a better chance of getting what you want. If you do nothing, you're going to get more of the same, which means you're going to continue to whine about it, which means at some point, no one's going to want to hear it from you anymore. So you're in the middle, if not at the end of your possibilities, if you do nothing. Nothing happens without action. Nothing. Let's be clear about that. You can think about things, you can dream about things, you can write about things. But if you keep in the outer space of actually doing the thing, it means nothing. It's a dream. It's a, it's a thought, it's an aspiration, but aspirations and dreams and goals that actually happen, they can't happen by thought alone. Unless you're bewitched and or I dream of genie and you can just will it to happen or you live at Hogwarts and you have magical powers, you actually, as a human, need to do something with those thoughts. So it's like saying, you know, I want to write a book. I want to write a book. I want to write a book. There's only so many years I could walk around saying, I'm going to write a book someday. At some point, I got to put pen to paper and I got to write the freaking book. If you want to become, you know, fit. There's only so much thinking about being fit that you can do without actually having to enter into a gym or get an app or get a piece of equipment or go outside and walk or run or bike or whatever it is. At some point in time, that inertia has to be broken. And what really is crazy to me is how much as humans we spend whining about things. Think about it, really. Have we just become whiners? And then I think the social media, as Karen would, Karen Latimer would say, 
this compare and despair culture. You know, we go on there. Oh, this one has a perfect life and this one has a perfect this. And oh my God, her business is doing so well and mine's sucking wind. And oh my God, she lost 40 pounds and I'm still feeling disgusting. Oh my God, she just won this thing and she just did a triathlon. And oh my God, she ran a marathon. Who cares? Focus on you and what it is that you want to accomplish. Because I got to tell you, I celebrate my friends who run marathons. I love them dearly. I look up to them. I admire them. But I know for myself, that's not a goal I have. I've run a half marathon just because it was on my bucket list. But to me, running a marathon is not something I aspire to. That doesn't mean I can't be fit. That doesn't mean I can't run every once in a while. It doesn't mean anything other than I'm very clear what I don't think is relevant to my fitness goals. And you have to be clear as to what you're willing to do. And with some of the things that you're not willing to do were okay, provided you stay open-minded about changing something that you happen to be whining about. So if you're not happy with something, I invite you to consider that inertia can be broken with not only the right mindset, but the right action plan. And action is so much stronger than words. So when my son will say, are you still working on that, mom? I am still working on that. But my words and my actions have to line up. So if I say, I want a better relationship with you, I kind of have to suck it up and make it happen. So it's on me. And ultimately what we find out as we go through life and the older I get, the more I'm clear about this. It's always on us to make things happen if that's something we want. If we want something very much, no one else can get it for us. Or sometimes when they get it for us, that's fine too. You know, if you can say a material object, somebody can buy that for you, sure. But if you have a goal that's really a self actualization goal, a goal that you have for yourself that you hold dearly, that you've held for a long time or that you thought about or dreamed about, that goal has to be backed up by an action plan. And, you know, I've had a sports psychologist on this podcast and she's talked about mindset and mindset is so much. I talk about internal narratives and external narratives in my book. That's so much. It's all about what it is that you think and what it is that you're willing to do in order to make those goals and dreams and thoughts actually happen. And I invite you to consider every time you hear somebody around you say no to something, that they're actually being motivated by fear. And that's really what it is. The boiled down version of inertia is fear. And I invite you to consider that you can break that cycle. It, you don't have to be fearful of something. You just have to try it. Michael Jordan is the first person to tell you he got cut from his basketball team in high school. He talks about making thousands of sh bad shots in order to make the good one. You know, you talk to people who have excelled at the highest possible levels, and they all have stories about trying and failing. And I'm going to connect the dots between inertia, fear of failure, and actually doing something and getting what you want. So I'm going to leave you with the thoughts of think about in your life, the people around you, are they being obstinate or stubborn or are they just fearful and you just need to help them through something with a little bit of empathy and some guidance and maybe some patience, which I will admit I am very short on as a general rule, but I am now have a lens where I see when people get stuck often, it's fear, fear of failure and fear of not doing the right thing and succeeding. But here's the other thing. We're never going to know if we're going to succeed if we don't try. So go out there, try your best, be who you're supposed to be, give it a shot. You'll be glad you did because without it, you're still stuck where you are. And that may not be working for you. That's not serving you. So go do it. Get into action and make it happen. Thank you. 15 minutes on the money. See you soon.
Thank you for joining Possibilities with Monique DeMeo. And this is Consider the Possibilities of Nourishment. Have a great day. No, make it a great day. Thank you.